and we're going to be talking this week about Elder Sign. Now, I've already done an Arkham Horror thing, and Elder Sign is basically the little brother of Arkham Horror. It's Arkham Horror on a dice game. Now, I don't much care for dice games, but I do like Arkham Horror, so I wanted to try this out and give it a shot. And I like it. It's a good game. A uh, lot less complex, a lot, le lot less rules, but a lot less theme. Um, it's, of course, made by Fantasy Flight Games. <clears throat> Here's the base set right here. It comes with the same characters that are in Arkham Horror, the same ancient ones, a lot of the same stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's what, inexpensive, $20.00. Uh, if you got an hour to kill or 30 minutes, this is a good game to play. Um, like I said, it's nowhere near as fun as Arkham Horror to me, but it's a good game um, for what it is. They have one expansion, and this is called Elder Sign Unseen Forces. And basically all this adds is a, some new characters, uh, a new Elder One, uh, older Elder Ones or whatever, uh, a new Cursed and Blessed Dice, and, and you know some new cards and stuff like that um, if you have the base game unseen forces is not necessary uh, to play with uh, as an expansion um, it does add a little bit more variety to it and it's, it's it's really inexpensive so if you like elder sign then I would recommend you get unseen forces um, but like I said it doesn't you don't have to have it to play um, there are only a few minor rule changes in this thing. Now, when we play, we're going to be playing with both sets, uh, Unseen Forces and the base set. We're going to just go ahead and combine them. Um, I find it a little interesting that Fantasy Flight Games has only put one expansion for, out for Elder Sign. Elder Sign has been around for a little bit, um, but there's really not much you can do with this game. Um, but we'll, have a, we'll take a look at it, we'll get it set up, and we'll show you a little bit what it's about. Alright, so we have the game set up, and we're going to go over a few of the components here. And uh, basically what you have you, we have here is, uh, this, this game takes place in a museum. Whereas Arkham Horror takes place in the city of Arkham, this takes place in a museum in Arkham. And uh, so these cards right here are the Souvenir Shop, the Lost and Found, the First Aid, and the Chapel. And um, these are from the Unseen Forces expansion. Um, I like to tend to use these. It's, it makes it a little bit harder because on the, un, on the regular base set, when they had these stores or places, you could buy an Elder Sign token, whereas in here you can't. So it makes things a little harder. Here's our clock. We're going to be keeping track of time. Here's our Mythos cards. And here's our Ancient One. And this this game we're going to be playing Shuddy Mail. Um, and basically, you got to get 12 Elder Signs to beat Shuddy Mail. Um, if you don't, it'll awaken. And it's much like Arkham Horror. If you don't stop this thing from waking it up, then you have to attack it and fight it. And it's, it's not an easy task to beat it. Um, so you want to try to, to, to get 12 Elder Signs and stop this thing from even awakening. These are our little Doom tokens here because they put them on the Doom track here. When this Doom track fills up, Shitty Mill will awake. You'll notice how on the Doom Track you have, you know, just regular guy, uh, some figure in a robe. That means you just, that's just a regular Doom Track thing, but you have this little monster icon, and when a, you put a Doom token on that, you have to put a monster on one of the cards. So Shitty Mill is going to have a special ability. Um, when an investigator fails an adventure, discard that adventure or other world card card as well as any monsters on that card and do not replace it if there are no more adventure or other world cards in play the game ends and the investigators lose so not only can you lose from this thing waking up and killing you but every time you fail an adventure you got to discard a card and if there's none on the board well the game is over speaking of cards here are the cards right here these are really nice cards i mean these are really this is my favorite thing about this game right here these are nice sized tarot card looking things and these are the adventures and you put the stack of the cards here and here are the other world cards right here and basically what you want to try to do is you want to try we'll take this hand of solace card which I got from a special promotion on one of the books and basically what it is it has a little cool artwork the artwork for this game is fantastic as always kudos to fantasy flight 
Uh, this is worth one point. So if you get if you beat this card, you get to keep it as a trophy. It's worth one point. Little text here and a little special rule. And then you know you have to roll these things in order to beat this card. And if you win, then you get these items. And if you lose, you take this penalty. Um, and we'll go over each of the uh, the penalties and rewards as we play each card. And then eventually you'll you'll get to know each and every one of those. There's always six of these on the board. When you beat one, you get to keep it, and then you replace it with another one. Other world cards have to be opened by one of these cards. If you beat it, another world opens, or a mythos card or something may open another world. And then it'll get placed on the board. Uh, and if you beat it, great. If not, it'll stay on the board. And you can choose to go to any one of these places whenever it's your turn. You don't have to beat it or go to one and fail and then keep trying to beat it. Uh, that's one of the good things about this game. Here we have our uh, cards. Our, these are our you know spell cards, common items, allies, unique items. And then, of course, new to the uh, thing here is our blessed and cursed cards. Our clue tokens, which will help us out. We'll go over that when we play again. And we have our little monster bag here full of monsters. And what happens is you take this little thing. And if you... Uh, have to put a monster on the card you'll you'll pick out the monster bag and you see uh, it's got this little token icon here and then on the back has right there it's worth a trophy as well one trophy and there's the name of the monster on there and um, some of these cards like these have these little white areas on there and so if a monster were appear you put the monster in that white area and so you not only have to do this in order to beat the monster but then you have to do this as well to beat the card. You can beat the monster and not defeat the card and keep the monster. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears> that <throat> does come up from time to time where you will beat the monster, but don't beat the card. You still get to keep the monster. And um, that just means that there's not a monster on that card, but you still would take the penalty because you were not able to beat the card. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to play with two characters. Uh, character number one is going to be Jenny Barnes. She's going to come with uh, six sanity and four health and she has a starting item of a common item and a spell and that ended up being dynamite and astral travel and she has a little special ability it says that trust fund at the start of her resolution phase jenny may discard one common item clue token or add or spell to add the yellow and red dice to her pool and then we have vincent lee he's a doctor five sanity five health he starts out with a common item and a spell he ended up getting the lantern and the red sign of Shuddy Mail. And he's a physician. Once per day at the start of any player's turn, Vincent may cause any one investigator of his choice, including myself, to regain one stamina. And uh, I picked all these random. These heroes were picked random. The villain was picked random. And now let's have a look see on the dice. Now when you play this game, you're going to be rolling these green dice here. And as you can see, these green dice have certain icons on them. This is a terror icon. This is a scroll icon. This is a skull icon. And then it has an investigation icon. One investigation, three investigation, and two investigation. Let's see. Okay. Um, let, let's say you wanted to add say you wanted to add um you had to get five investigation and you roll this dice well you got two and if you get another dice and you got another if you got three two plus three is five you find your investigation the red dice here it has the same thing on it except that it also has a wild uh, toke uh, icon on there and that means you can make it anything you want now the red and the yellow dice here which has uh, is a little different. It has everything except for the. It has a four investigation one. You have to get special cards in order to let you use the red and the yellow die. Like Jenny Barnes here can use dynamite, and she would give up that card, and she would be able to use the red die for her whole turn to add to her green dice to roll to try to get these icons. And then we have a blessed and cursed dice, and basically the blessed die is the same as the other dice, and it's just white. And what it'll let you do is it just adds an extra dice to your pool. Uh, if you fail to do an adventure, though, 
you end up losing the blessing. You can get the blessing dice certain ways. You can get a card that'll let you, or you can buy a blessing over at the chapel and stuff like that. And there's a cursed dice, which um, if you get cursed, you'll have to have this dice. And the way this dice works is if uh, when you roll it, and it, like here it rolled a two investigation, where every other dice you rolled that came up with a two investigation, you would have to discard it. So it really can hurt you. Um, it would make you lose dice and everything. So we'll get, we got the game set up and we'll start playing in just a few and I'll upload this and then we'll get right on with round one and we'll explain more of the rules as we go. Till then, see you.